Back in 2013, the world was pretty different, right? At the time, I was freshly divorced and still making a living going from casino to casino playing Texas Hold'em. The anime that would change my life hadn't come out yet, so I was still stuck in my anime hater phase. But despite not really being in the community, I couldn't help but hear about a new anime that was taking the otaku world by storm. It was about weird giants that were attacking a city full of people that looked Japanese but had names that sounded straight off a liquor bottle. There were people that weaved in between buildings like Spider-Man with some of the most stunning animation anyone had seen up to that point. There were characters that eventually became iconic and would be recognized by people who didn't even watch anime. There were twists and turns that made it seem like our whole understanding of the show was turned on its head every couple of episodes. People called it the anime Game of Thrones, the next big thing, the anime that would start a new era for the medium as a whole. And honestly, they were right. But it's all come to an end now. One of the most critically, financially, and culturally successful anime of all time is over. And, um, I don't really know how to feel about it. Once this final, final season was announced, I already started thinking about making a long Attack on Titan retrospective type video just talking about the series as a whole. But then I thought, what is there to be said about Attack on Titan that hasn't been said a million times over? And then I was going to sit down and record a reaction to the final episode, but I mean, uh, let's be real, I didn't want to do that either. I think something like this just needs to be enjoyed without worrying about being entertaining for the camera. If you follow me on Twitter, I said that I didn't even want to watch the final episode because I knew I was going to be emotional as hell. And I'm not even a crazy Attack on Titan fan like that. I mean, I love the show like anybody else, and I read the manga, I followed along with the anime, all of that. But, I mean, it's not like I'm a super fan. I wouldn't even say that this finale was anywhere near one of my most anticipated shows of the year. And yet, here I am just kind of in a daze that it's all over. To put it in perspective, I like to compare it to something like Naruto. If you watch this channel at all, you know that Naruto is my least favorite anime of all time. And yet, I read the manga all the way from when it came out in 1999 and followed the anime all the way up to the end of Shippuden in 2017. And even that felt like an emotional end of an era. So how much more do you think something like Attack on Titan hit, which is a show that's not my favorite, but still one that I legitimately enjoy? So yeah, I didn't want to do a big video or anything, Thing, I just want to give props to the show and do like a more mini retrospective. To start, let's look back at some of the Crunchyroll comments from the very first episode all the way back when it was released. Yes, so happy to see amazing action movies coming out. So tired of the moe and ecchi harems, lol. Best anime ever made our action. It's about time they make a comeback. I don't know how I'm supposed to relate to a character unless they're a small girl wearing a mini skirt helplessly trying to battle some phallic creature while exasperating loudly to generic J-Rock. How the hell am I supposed to enjoy this? <laughs> It's funny because I told y'all back in the Kill a Kill video, Moe fatigue was a real thing during that time. Which is funny because Kill a Kill would come out a couple months later featuring a girl in a miniskirt battling a phallic creature and that's like my favorite anime of all time. So What's really funny though is that people are still saying the same kind of things today. The big praise for shows like Chainsaw Man or Vinland Saga or other popular acclaimed recent shows is that people are tired of the harem isekais or the lolly fan service shows. It just goes to show that this kind of rhetoric isn't that new. There have been always more serious dramatic shows that don't follow anime stereotypes. I, um, and then you have these comments just giving general praise to the show. That's all good stuff. Not a surprise. I mean, the anime was, you know, critically acclaimed basically from episode one. So then you got this person who says, Hiroyuki Sawano is definitely becoming a rising star in the anime OST industry. Gundam Unicorn, Aono Exorcist, Guilty Crown, and now Attack on Titan. <laughs> it's wild hearing him called a rising star considering how well loved he is now. Which, funny enough, Hiroyuki Sawano would actually go on to work on Kill a Kill's soundtrack shortly after this, and um, yeah, another Kill a Kill plug. I gotta ride the show even on a completely unrelated video. Okay, this person says, hmm, what level tech is this? Primary weapons seem to be blades and houses are mostly stone, but the opening showed guns and those brachiation devices are far from primitive. With World War I or newer tech, humanity would have no problem. Ah, if we only knew. I can tell that there will be a point in the arc where the main character goes on a training quest and discovers the secret to victory. After much reflection, broken training equipment, and exhaustion, the Achilles tendon. Um... 
If we only knew. And of course, you got the standard JoJo losers commenting for no reason. It feels like the only things that are certain in life are death, taxes, and JoJo fans constantly embarrassing themselves. All right, let's go to my anime list now and check out some of the earliest reviews of the show. If you're looking for a lighthearted, revolving around boobs, sugar-coated anime, Fuck off. This is one of the most harsh animes I've seen in a while. People you are introduced to are slaughtered and these titans are pure evil. From the first episode, the Aaron was traumatized by the giants. He has been acting purely out of guts and vengeance, blah, 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 whatever. If you want to watch a badass gory anime, look no further, blah, 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 blah. Overall, this anime is probably the greatest I've watched in a long time. In my opinion, this is better than Sword Art Online already. Sword Art Online was amazing. <laughs> if only they knew about how Sword Art Online would end up. Yeah, this is just another example of people loving the edginess of the show because that's what 13-year-old anime fans like. But I keep on saying, even back then, people were unaware that there have always been brutal anime like this from Elf and Light all the way back to the disturbing OVAs of the 1980s. People always think that whatever new, dark, gritty show that comes out is like the first of its kind. And once again, history repeats itself with shows like Chainsaw Man. I mean, go back and read the comments to some of my Chainsaw saw man videos talking about how oh they've never seen an anime this gritty and serious um it's actually kind of comforting to know that some things never change Ooh, okay let's read a review from someone who had mixed feelings attack on titan possibly this year's most popular anime and surprisingly one of its worst as well oh brother Although being immensely popular, Attack on Titan does not live up to the reputation that so many believe it does. Yes, the action and excitement are all very easily seen, and yet the predictable slash cliche story and the absolutely horrific characters make this the Sword Art Online 2.0. In short, do not expect to be blown away by any means. In fact, prepare yourself for a rather emotional and boring ride that will make you wonder why you are still watching. If you're confused as to why people mention Sword Art Online in a lot of these, it's because that had just come out a year earlier and it was also lauded as a super gritty and serious show that, oh, it isn't for the faint of heart. Oh yeah, you gotta be a badass to watch this show. Story, the story in Attack on Titan revolves around a world where humanity struggles to survive against giant genital-less titans. While the story is fresh and includes very nice aspects, the predictability of the story is insane. Yeah, of course. Attack on Titan, the show known for being completely straightforward and predictable. Character. Now, Attack on Titan makes a fairly silly attempt to draw in their audience through rampant emotions, namely Aaron. Aaron would be described as the little train that could. This emotional roller coaster of a character fails to use logic at any given moment. Rather, Aaron relies on iron strong determination that will somehow be able to physically harm these giant titans. He is more childish than any other character and has no actually talent. Yet this boy will miraculously save humanity. You can bet on it. Furthermore, you have the useless Armin, <laughs> the unnecessarily complicated Mikasa, the potato eating unneeded comedy relief in Sasha, and a whole gang of terrible characters that meet the bare minimum for supporting characters being alive. Overall, Attack on Titan fails to reach the standards that have been set for it. The story is rather cheesy and the characters are a mess. Uh, Attack on Titan ultimately shows that an anime will not simply be great because it shows death and blood. Rather, it needs a balance of characters, plot, and theme to get the job done. Hopefully, Attack on Titan becomes better because right now it deserves a 6 out of 10. Nothing special unless you are easily entertained by puerile attempts to become one of the great anime. Okay. So according to this, the person made this review after watching the first six episodes, so I'm sure after they continued watching, their opinion changed, but damn, <laughs> interesting takes. I guess this is just how some people reacted when the anime was brand spanking new. But yeah, the world of anime was completely different when Attack on Titan first came out, right? And in the decade plus that the anime has been airing, anime as a medium has gone through numerous changes. And even though the show itself went through its own changes, namely switching studios and that kind of stuff, Attack on Titan has mostly stayed strong the entire time. Some of you who watched the show as it was airing probably remember this small dip in popularity during season two. I mean, I was also one of those people who thought that that was probably the lowest point in the series. But then the show came back for season three, which a lot of people argue is the strongest season in the entire show. And now for this very final season, the hype train has still been going up until the very end. Now, this video isn't going to be about whether or not the ending of Attack on Titan is good or not. I mean, I don't really feel like getting into that debate. I mean, me personally, I'm pretty neutral on it. I don't think it's terrible and I don't think it's like the best thing ever. And even though I'm stating this clearly in the video right now, there's still going to be goofballs who are all in the comments talking about, but the ending was bad. Regardless of whether you think the ending ruined the show or if it was just okay, or maybe if you even liked it, the point still stands that the ending of Attack on Titan 
marks the ending of an era. To make another Game of Thrones comparison, it's kind of like how finite that final eighth season felt. Sure, the ending of Game of Thrones was a disaster, but there was still that feeling of, damn, this critically acclaimed show that's gone on for the past decade and that has influenced pop culture to such an extent is finally over. And Attack on Titan's ending isn't nearly as bad as Game of Thrones in my opinion, but it is just as finite. That's it. Attack on Titan is done. There's no Attack on Titan ship it in and there's no Eren 2.0, Attack on Titan next generations. That's it, it's over. And for a show that means so much to so many people and that has done so much for the medium of anime as a whole, I think it's important that Attack on Titan receive its flowers. Again, regardless of what you think of the show, I don't think it's a crazy request to just say, clap it up. Shout out Isayama, shout out to all the staff at Studio Wit and MAPPA. For better or for worse, y'all really gave us one hell of an anime. <sighs> Damn. It really is the end of an era. Oh, now imagine when One Piece ends. Oh shit, now that's gonna be wild. I'm going to